Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Whitney promised she would make content every week and so she's making content for YouTube. Um, tonight we're going to be doing a soap that I had already kind of shared on my social media and it's this lemon poppy seed soap. So I'd already put my lye solution in um, that has distilled water and raw silk and sodium lactate and that's my goat milk going in. I've recently got quite a few questions about how I do my goat milk and my lye. Um, and by recently, I mean that I went through and read every single comment for the last year that I haven't read. And I'm really sorry if you were somebody that I hadn't gotten back to for the last year. I'm terrible about answering questions in the comments. Uh, so if you've got a question, it's not because I don't care or because I'm trying to gatekeep information. Uh, exactly the opposite. I am just uh, really bad at getting back on here and responding to questions. So if you have a question, do me a solid and send me an email. Um, I will put my email up on the screen so that way you can uh, get my email address. It's usually listed everywhere in my um, description. It's on my website. Uh, but yeah, don't, don't comment here aside to say it's pretty and you like it uh, if you need a response immediately because I suck. Anyway, back to the soap. Anyway, so back to what we're doing tonight. So tonight uh, we are doing a pointy layer soap. Uh, this is with a really well-behaved fragrance. Uh, the fragrance is fresh, is it freshly zested? Freshly zested lemon uh, from Wholesale Supplies Plus. Uh, it is a nice, bright, tart lemon. It is exactly as it says. It doesn't have a house cleany pledge smell and it also behaves nicely um, so i'm coloring this with some activated charcoal and black oxide here both of these came from i want to say nurture soap in fact i'm almost positive they did um, and then the yellow i'm using um, i think is actually bright yellow raincoat which is from mad micas uh, with a dash of force of nature and then in that other little cup, you can see my poppy seeds. And I've also got titanium dioxide from Brambleberry, which is the oil-based. Uh, I briefly talked about the oil-based titanium dioxide before. Again, it's my favorite. Uh, you can have an opinion. You would be wrong. Um, I'm kidding. You can absolutely like whatever you like. I just prefer the oil-based because it tends to tone down the glycerin rivers, uh, which is something I don't particularly like in my soap. Um, so you'll notice for this one, I've got my two highlight colors, which is the black and the white, and then I'm going to be doing the yellow and the poppy seeds into the other larger pot. I've got a small little um, extra spouted container off to the side to put that in to actually pour. This technique is uh, really kind of a fun one. It was originated and taught to us uh, by Tree Marie of Tree Marie Soapworks. Uh, she is amazing, and if you don't know her and somehow know me, um, you need to go follow her because her work is just outstanding. She's absolutely one of the soap makers that I, I reference in my head when I joke about being a messy soaper because she is the opposite of messy. She is clean and precise, and it's just fantastic. Anyway, now that I'm fan, done fangirling about her, um, her, her work is really nice, and she is the one that taught us this technique a few years ago on the Soap Challenge Club. Uh, you can use this technique a couple different ways. I'm using it uh, the way the club taught it to us, uh, which is where we use layers and then you build upon the layers to make the little pointy uh, spires or fires um, in the inside of the soap. You can also use this uh, to make big waves. Um, so if you see those soaps that are those big wave soaps, this is kind of how they do it. Um, that was the poppy seeds going in. They're organic poppy seeds. I just got them from the grocery store. Uh, you can get them from so soap supply specialists. Uh, I'm not usually that patient, so I got mine from the grocery store. So I'm just mixing all that in, and then we will go ahead and get ready to uh, actually get making soap here. That fragrance oil I mentioned earlier, I said that it behaves well. It does. Um, it also doesn't discolor. Uh, so I'm, I'm pretty confident with it, but because I hadn't used it in a while, I was worried that it might misbehave. Uh, I usually use it in a blend. So I was careful this time and practiced what I preach, which is don't just add the fragrance oil to everything, but add it to your colorants after you're satisfied with them. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just adding in a little bit of the fragrance oil to the two, um, I guess you can call them contrasting colors. Um, but the two other colors of the soap, 
Um, and I'd already added it, of course, to the larger batch. So that's why I did it that way. Um, it's not because of anything more than just being a little bit cautious when I haven't played with the fragrance for a hot minute. Um, I mentioned before in other videos that this is something that you should do um, and then usually go right ahead and, and completely ignore my own advice and do the opposite. So this is me doing what I'm preaching. Uh, so now I'm going to go ahead and get the base layer of this soap in after I tidy up a little bit. This technique, uh, you want a little bit thicker trace than where I am right now. I'm not sure how well you can see. Um, I, I knew going into this that this trace was a little too thin, but I've gotten some really neat looking soaps uh, despite it being too thin. So I figured I would just kind of go, go with it and see what happened. Uh, the trace that you want for a good, uh, well, I should say successful as in the, the view of most of the conventional ones that you'll see out there is a bit thicker than this. And you'll see what I'm talking about in just a second. Uh, for this technique, you're going to very carefully and as close as you can to the layer of soap you've already laid in, make thin little back and forth lines. You can do this with a squirt bottle, you have a lot more control, or you can do this with a pitcher. I do a pitcher because I tend to be lazy and I want this to go in decently. So as I'm going to put it in, you'll see this kind of splooshes right down and you'll see it almost splash back and start to color the batter around it. That's a really good indication that your trace is too thin that you're not going to get these nice defined lines that you'll see later on. Um, so if you are really worried about getting the right one, stop and wait for everything to thicken up a little bit. And you'll see what I'm talking about right about here. See how this just disappears into the soap? That's a little too thin. And I kind of pull back how much weight I'm putting behind it. And you'll see these little dots that I'm getting. I am barely putting this soap in and it, you can see it right there at the top blending. That's what you don't wanna see with this. This means you're getting the soap kind of wisping in and, and hitting the bottom and coming back up and mixing with the other color. So if you want nice strong lines, that's the opposite of it there. Normally you would build this up and try to build a nice black layer and then go with the white. Um, I, I, <laughs> I go on too long here. I should have stopped and let everything thicken up, but I was being stubborn and I was just thinking to myself, well, It'll be what it'll be, let's just continue on. So now I go to my white. My white is also too thin. Everything's too thin right now. But you can see the white lines just disappear. You can't even see where they've been for half of the passes of the soap. And again, see that blending? See where it's kind of starting to bounce back and you get this wash of color? That's how you know your trace is too thin for this technique. So again, I'm just gonna kind of continue on. I, I'm being perseverant here. I don't necessarily recommend this unless you are in a, in a situation like I am here where the end purchaser of this soap did not mind if there was variances in the technique. Uh, they just wanted beautiful soap. They didn't care if it was specific on any technique. So uh, I kind of just went on because I, I kind of wanted to see what would happen. Um, it's been a hot minute since I've done one of these with a trace that was too thin. So I figured I would just continue. This is a technique that definitely calls for patience. Um, it can be a little tiring. My, I'm not sure if you can really tell, but I'm starting to rest the end of this uh, container on the edge of the mold as time is going on. Because even though these are smaller pitchers that I use constantly, my arm was getting tired. Because <laughs> I'm going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. But at least I got a little bit better of a white, a layer built up. So now I'm taking my spatula and I'm trying to kind of cover everything underneath with a white layer. So when I use the next layer, it'll actually have a layer to build upon. So remember the idea of this particular technique is to make these little pointed spires. Um, you can call them little fires. I've had people describe them as like spooky trees. Uh, the idea is to actually have some you know, little fire bits in there. So now you can see this trace is thickening up a little bit. Again, I'm still being careful, hence the dots instead of lines, but I'm trusting it more. So now those little lines going back and forth, the space in between them is what is going to give you the little fire slash uh, spire slash fingers in the soap. So you want them to be kind of close together. You don't want to just layer it all up very thickly with the colorant because the more little spaces there are, the more little tendrils you're gonna have in your final soap. 
So this is actually a very satisfying layer. This is very technically accurate for this type of pour. I'm just going back and forth now and kind of filling in where I can see the white peeping through. Oop, a little too much there. Uh, to try to kind of get that black layer now all the way on top. This is exactly where it should be. This is how the technique should look. Uh, you can, you know, stop with the little tiny dabs like I was doing here and then just use a spatula, uh, which I will go to in a minute. But I was just very satisfied that it was behaving itself and my arm wasn't too tired at this point. Um, I was also excited that it was finally doing what I wanted it to do. So I went ahead and got it all the one color. Now I'm going to go back to my yellow. So the other consideration when you're doing a technique like this is your colorants. I have learned, um, because I've done this before uh, with this type of pour, that the white and the yellow tend to kind of fade into each other. Um, just stopping when I'm saying that for just a second, this is again, exactly the right trace. Look how nice this is going in. You can see my lines, you can see them going through. It's very easy to see everything and you can see the little spires of black peeping through. Perfect, Mwah. love it. Anyway, back to what I was saying. So I've done this before. This is a color palette I really like for this particular smell. Um, but last time I did it, I had done it with the white and the yellow next to each other. And yellows are tricky. They're kind of a pain. Uh, I see pop all of my soaps because it hardens them um, and it helps brighten the color unless the color is yellow. Yellow, when you see pop it, most of them tend to turn paler. Uh, when I say see pop, all I'm talking about is putting my soap in the oven. Um, after the oven's been preheated to 170 degrees, I put the soap in the oven, I turn the oven off, I turn the oven light on, and then I leave that soap in there overnight. So that is my process for basically every soap that I make. And when I do that with yellows, um, they, they all tend to go pale. I've got a couple that don't go as pale on me, but I'm often using other tricks like adding in oranges and doing different blends to try to keep the yellow yellow. Uh, so I forgot that my own advice when I made this soap last and my white and yellow kind of melded together and you could basically not even tell that there was yellow in there and it was really frustrating for me. So this time I thought I'm gonna be smarter and I'm gonna buffer this yellow with black and white. Um, so the white is only touching the black and the yellow is only touching the black as much as I can. Um, obviously, that doesn't totally work on the bottom because they all kind of bled together, but that was the idea behind it. I had a lot of folks on my social media saying that it looks like Charlie Brown and I love that. I agree. I think it does look like a Charlie Brown shirt and that made me super happy. Um, again, great trace. This is exactly where I want it. I am starting to get a little tired here now. Um, so you might see me getting a little less swoopy with my lines because my arm is tired and it's getting late. Um, this is a longer pour for this type of soap. It's a more intricate pour. Uh, you'll see that this video in length is, I want to say like 18 minutes or so. And that was all pour time, basically. Um, very minimal coloring mixing here. So uh, your arms do get tired when you do these kind of more intricate techniques, or at least mine does because I'm a baby. Uh, anyway, so again, I'm just filling in the edges to make that black um, as, as solid as I can and then adding in the white. Um, and I left over a little bit of black and I'm leaving a little bit of white to do the top. So again, now this white is a little too thick and I'm not sure if you can tell, but I actually picked up the height of the pitcher because I wanted to make sure that I was getting a good uh, impression into that bottom layer. So once your soap starts thickening up, um, besides giving it a little stir like you saw me do before I poured it, going a little higher will help you get more depth into that. Um, that's just basic physics, right? The higher an object falls from the, lo the sharper its velocity, which means it's going to go into deeper depth into the soap below it. So that's all I'm doing to kind of help myself out here because I knew it wasn't going to totally fit um, or totally be as nice and smooth as previous layers. Um, that's a real common thing that you see with a pointed layer is that your lower layers are real swoopy and then your upper layers kind of get a little uh, squidgy and that's because a lot of times the batter is thickening up. So uh, this is no exception to that. This happened here to me, um, but for the most part it worked out pretty well. Um, again, I'm just trying to get that black layer down to try to separate it so you can see it from the other colors on the top here. The other big thing with this technique that I do see a lot of folks um, sort of bypassing or not paying attention to is try to, when you're picking your colors, like I said, match or you know do complementary colors, 
but also be aware of how much batter you have to do things. So for example, I knew I wanted to do kind of a striped top, so I'm, I've, I've saved some here and I'm at the very edge of it um, just to do that top. But don't be afraid to hold some back to either do a top or to make sure that you have enough for each layer. That sometimes involves math. I, I know that's a dirty word, at least it is for me. I don't like doing a whole bunch of math if I can avoid it. But it does help make sure that you've got enough colors to do the layers for what you want to do. Um, the other thing that I occasionally see when folks do this kind of design and they go to do their top is they don't take into consideration that the farther you put in a chopstick to do a top, the more this top design is going to interfere with the interior design. Um, I don't, I don't want to mess up the inside. You can see this is still very, very well behaved. Um, so I'm just putting it in just a little bit, just doing kind of a simple design. I almost regret that I didn't leave it alone like this, but I knew that there was going to be multiple bars. Uh, so I ended up going a little bit more and kind of swirling the sides of it. But I do love a basic chevron pattern. But you can tell I'm just barely putting the tip uh, of my uh, chopstick in there. And that is my lucky chopstick. It's my favorite. And I'm going to pull it up the other way as well, just to kind of give each bar a little bit of an interesting design. So then I'm going to clean up my edges. Um, that, you don't have to do this, but it drives me nuts when I don't see people do this. So I'm going to talk about it real quick. If you clean up your edges while everything's in the mold, um, and I'm doing this by using a little uh, spatula here to kind of scrape off the excess soap, all you're doing is making more work for yourself later on. And while I don't mind this as much when I've done a pipe top, it's very hard to clean up uh, a pipe top edges. With these smooth top soaps like this, or these low top is the other term you'll hear people say or call these, it just takes a couple extra seconds and then you don't have to clean up nearly as much. Uh, plus when you take photos for your Instagram or for your Facebook or whatever other social media you are using photos in, it just looks so much, like look how much prettier that is. It's so much cleaner. Uh, so, you know, do us all a solid, mostly me, and clean up your edges because it just looks better. Uh, it takes, like I said, moments and the end result is much prettier. Uh, if you are worried about kind of messing up your swirl, like you can see I pulled some of that black along with it uh, and you don't like that as much, then don't do your pretty top until after you've cleaned it up. Just be aware you may have to do a little bit of cleaning afterwards because when you do a top, your chopstick automatically will displace a little bit of soap. Um, so that's just a little PSA for me, to me, love me, from me. Um, so that's, that's what this looks like here. So now that this is done, I am going to finish cleaning up the bits here and then we will go ahead and get this ready to cut. Okay, so it's the next day and I am cutting these soaps and ta-da! You can see that I kind of got exactly what I was thinking. Uh, let me freeze the next one so you can see what this looks like. One second, here we are. And, okay, so notice on the bottom how wispy that is. That's because it was, the trace was so low. But let's get another cut and I'll freeze it again so we can talk about what went right with this soap because a lot of things did. I'm really happy with these bars. I think they came out really fun. So. See how pretty those are right there? That's perfect. That's exactly what I'm looking for. That's a great pointy layer. That's what I want and I'm thinking of. And I actually don't mind the more wispy bottom layers. Um, I think they're interesting and they're fun. Um, at the end of the day, this is a beautiful soap. It's functional. And one of the best things about this design is that it gives a different look in each bar. Um, and there's a couple that I really like and I'll point them out. I, we haven't gotten to them yet that actually have like little dots in them, perfect dots. Uh, in the bar, which just completely cracked me up. I've never seen that one happen before um, until I did it on purpose with like a little, uh, like the mini drop swirl. So I will continue along narrating this. Um, the other thing I don't talk about nearly enough is my cutter. This is actually from Custom Craft Tools. It's my favorite cutter I've ever used and I love them. I don't talk about them enough and how wonderful they are, but I, I love this cutter and I love the, uh, how useful it is and it's very sturdy. I should wash it more. Oh, there's our dot I was talking about. I was so amused. I looked at it a couple times and I was like, oh, this is great. And you know, I, I didn't record that part of it. Uh, I had music playing and unfortunately I couldn't get the music to come out without getting a, um, 
copyright. There's the dot again on the other side. And remember me talking about cleaning up? I still had a little bit of a shelf. Yep, there's the dots. Again, I'm really amused by the dots. Um, so the other thing with this cutter that I really like is that after I use it, I was cutting a bunch of soap. I actually just basically throw it in my sink. I wash it and it's good to go. But yes, you can see me breaking off the edges of each of these bars uh, because even though I complained about cleaning up and how much time it saves you, I didn't do a very good job. So I guess do as I say, not as I do. Anyway, thanks for watching.